Welcome back to my 47RH build. I just got this shipment of goodies from Garand and Logan Built. This will make this by far the most expensive single component I have assembled for any vehicle. Big investment. So I have my new valve body from Garand that's been upgraded in many ways that I don't fully understand, but it looks pretty sweet. So all I need to do now is move the rooster comb from the old valve body onto the new valve body. And then I also have some new stuff from Garand that's associated with doing that. Now since this detent ball is under spring pressure, I need to make sure that I cover it so it doesn't go flying this way. This is the old detent ball and spring setup, and this is what's going in my built transmission. It's a little bullet instead. So I'll go ahead and install this right here. Next I need this little guy. This is the stock piece. This is the upgraded Garand piece. So there's the rooster comb there. Pick out this old seal and I'll go ahead and press the new seal in there just like that and there we go valve body is ready to go now so I'm gonna stick it back in its packaging to keep any dust off of it and then I'll come back to it when it's time to actually install it into the transmission I'm gonna start reassembling the overdrive section from my pile of new parts, I have my overdrive direct clutches, and I'm going to stick them in a marinade. While those are soaking, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, some lint-free shop rags and kind of clean everything up. So I've been marinating these overnight, and it's just going to be nine clutches, eight regular steels, the thick bottom steel, and then the thick top steel. So I'm going to stack it up imitating the old stack. Got everything cleaned up, now I can go ahead and reassemble it. I got my index marks right here that I need to make sure I align. Got that aligned. Now I can go ahead and put this snap ring back in. Before I forget I'm going to put a little Vaseline on the bushings. Nothing crazy, just a thin film. Go ahead and put this one in the bottom. Alright, now I'm going to start loading the overdrive gear train assembly back up. And I'm going to first take the roller for the overrunning clutch. There's a lip on one side and it's not on the other side. That lip skirt is going to go on the hub. So the skirt is on the back side. Next thing I'm going to do is take my new bearing and the crimped side faces down like that and then stick it to the bottom of the clutch hub here. So now I'm just going to stick my fingers in the splines like that and then just load this in. And it takes just a little bit of a clockwise motion to get it down in there and seated. Next I've got my new planetary and I'm just going to dunk it real quick. There's the new planetary in there. And now I'm going to focus on the little sun gear here. So I have a new plate and a new bearing. New bearing can get soaked in ATF. And now I'm just going to put some petroleum jelly on the bushings. Now I'm going to go ahead and dunk this in ATF. Now I'm going to install the new backing plate here. Clean off my snap ring here. Alright, now I'm going to take the gigantic direct spring and put it on this side of the sun gear. Then I'm going to take the clutch hub here, slide it over the top, making sure that my splines are engaged. And now I'm going to stick this in the press and then install this snap ring. So 
So I'm just making sure that my round wire snap ring is fully seated the whole way around before I release this. Next I'm going to go ahead and load the Sun Gear clutch hub assembly into the gear train. So I soaked my new bearing in ATF, the side with the little crimps on it with the inner race. That needs to face down. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and load this up with clutches and steels. This first one here, the reaction plate, it's counterboard on the back side. See that little recess there? That recess needs to face down. The top plate here, the uh, lip faces up. The next thing I need to do is stick in my alignment tool to make sure that the overrunning clutch and the planetary are aligned. The alignment tool has fully seated down in there. Now I can stick this in the press. And all I have to do is press down on that hub until this top plate falls below the recess for this snap ring. Next I've got my new front bearing here, so I'm going to soak this in ATF real quick. Just in case you're wondering, it's a Koyo and that's the part number. Now I need to make sure that the snap ring groove that's machined into the outside of the bearing faces up in this case. Now I can go ahead and insert the retaining snap ring. Now that I have the overdrive gear train assembly pretty well put together, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild the governor assembly now. Inside it is a little filtration element that I need to make sure is clean. These three ceiling rings here, I have new ones. So there's the tiny little filter. All right, I got everything cleaned up pretty well. Now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble. I'm going to start by taking my filter, which I cleaned out, and I'm just going to dip it in ATF real quick. With the key facing this way, the filter goes to the hole on this side. Now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall all of the bolts exactly where they were, and I'm going to put just a dab of blue Loctite on the threads. Next I'm going to install my three new ceiling rings, and before installing each one, I'm just going to compress them over center just a little bit, like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the governor body installed on the output shaft. And to do that, I'm just going to take the little key, find which way it fits the snuggest, and then put just a little bit of Vaseline on it to hold it in place. And then I'll install the governor. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and torque these four governor body bolts to eight foot-pounds. First, I'm going to take the weight. Got to check the action on the uh, two-stage. The gasoline 47RHs, uh, they have a three-stage governor weight, I believe, and the diesels have a two-stage. So I think theoretically you could take a gasoline 47RH and modify the governor and then use it in a diesel. Now I'm going to take the thin washer and put that in place. Next I'm going to install this internal snap ring and I'm facing the sharp side or the machined flat side out just because I think it'll hold better. Alright, now to address the opposite side, here's the governor valve shaft. Now the side with this little recess is going to be going in there like this. So the recess faces this end. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is take my E-clip right here 
and now there's a rounded side and there's a side that's machined flat. The flat machined side needs to face in. And now I need to put the other circlip on. Once again, making sure that the rounded side faces out. Next, I'm just going to put this snap ring to retain the governor. I don't think it's going to make much difference, but I just clocked the ceiling rings here so that they're not all in a line. All right. This assembly is ready to get loaded into the overdrive housing. Now I'm going to go ahead and load up the overdrive housing next. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut a gasket. This won't be necessary unless you're putting this into a first gen, but um, I'm not going to put the seal in here because the NP205 transfer case, when it sits in here, uh, that seal can't be there. So instead I'm going to have to use this flange uh, to create the seal between the transmission and the transfer case. So. ATF doesn't go everywhere. So this is a five inch diameter hole right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that on my gasket material and then cut the rest of the shape out. All right, so there's the gasket for when I need it. So since there's not going to be a seal on the output shaft right here, uh, there's going to be ATF that's going to sit in this portion here and I want to see how much can actually fit in there so that I know in addition to the deep pan how much extra ATF I should put in this thing to account for that so I'm going to go ahead and dump some distilled water in here and try and get a estimate All right, so I measured the volume of all of these pockets and stuff where ATF is gonna collect, and now I need to measure the volume of the, I guess it would be a cylinder, so I need to measure the cylinder volume of five inches times, that's about half an inch, but I'll measure it, and then that'll tell me the complete volume of ATF that's gonna sit back here, and I can factor that in to how much I fill this thing. And again, this is only applicable if it's being swapped into a first gen with the NP205 transfer case, uh, not the 241. After some very unexciting math, it's going to hold about 0.645 of a quart. So now that that's measured, I'm going to go ahead and clean out the inside of this case one more time and then get everything loaded into it. So there is the nice, clean, empty case. So first I've got the rear bearing. Uh, this one was in good shape, so I'm just going to go ahead and dip it in ATF real quick and then install that, followed by the snap ring. Next, the snap ring can go in. Next thing I'm going to do is clean off the governor's support and the tubes one last time with compressed air and then get them installed. Next I'm going to go ahead and install the parking pall stuff. First I'm going to install this little guy with the pin that fits in that recess down there. This funky little snap ring sits on top to retain it. Next I just have to install the actual pall itself, the pall shaft, the spring that makes it springy, and that guy gets torqued to 20 foot-pounds according to the manual. All right, next I'm going to install the bolt that retains the rod, which is down seated in that hole now with the hollow end facing up so it's easy to extract. And just verify that it works correctly. Next, I'm going to load the front bearing snap ring into the case. All right, now what I'm going to do is Move this onto my special tool, which I used a minute ago, pressing everything into place. Now I'm going to lift the case and gently place it on top. I'm to the point where I can go back through this little window right here, and I need to expand this snap ring to get it to grab the front bearing. 
and then the gear train assembly will be inside the case. There we go. All right, next comes the flat snap ring. Next comes the wavy one. Next I'm going to install the reaction plate. This one measures 0.215 inches. Next thing I'm going to do is install all of the clutches and steels. So typically a 47RH will have five clutches, but these are black altos and there's room for six. So we're running six. Now I can take this dinky little round wire snap ring and put it in the top groove. Next thing we need to do is take some measurements to figure out exactly which selective spacer I should run. Alright, so I'm back and uh, hopefully this is the last thing I'm going to have to buy for this transmission before I assemble it. It's kind of starting to drive me crazy. Um, so I bought a new .215 uh, top plate for the Overdrive Direct, so I'm going to try this. And then I also have a Sonax shim kit, which I can actually add these shims underneath the uh, thrust bearing there. And then maybe that will give me the clearance that I'm looking for. So change of plans. I think I actually need to order some different stuff for this. So I'm going to put that on pause. And instead I'm going to start loading up the main case. And I got this all cleaned up. So now I'm going to start with installing the servos. First I'm going to install the low reverse servo, got the bore cleaned up and I'm replacing it with the uh, superior super servo kit combined with new spring and some of the old parts like the snap ring and whatnot and then just kind of throw all, that, all this together and then put it into the case. The reason the new one is so much wider than stock is because this one actually has a tendency to get kind of cockeyed in the bore and it'll stick. But these ones with the little Teflon sliders, they are a lot more stable inside the bore. So this is a, a good upgrade for sure. There we go. Lube the new piston plug. And this is the old spring and the old uh, snap ring there, retainer. And now I'm just going to put a little bit of ATF on this and a little bit of ATF in the bore. And then I'm going to seat it in there, being careful not to catch the lip of this seal on anything and make sure it gets in there nice and straight. Servo assembly's in there. Next, this thick boy goes in. You can see how much bigger it is than the stock spring. This is the spring retainer that comes with the superior kit. That guy goes like that. And then I need to push down on this hole fiasco and then install the snap ring so it was a huge pain but I was able to get that new heavy-duty spring compressed down so that I could get the snap ring in there I had to use this punch that I had laying around to rest on this rib on the case and then I used this C clamp to compress the spring and then I snuck the snap ring in there next I'm gonna do the front servo slash kick down servo get all that figured out real quick for the front servo I'm gonna get rid of the dock spring don't need it I'm gonna be using this uh, Sonex billet cover which is this piece here came with that little o-ring and then I'm gonna take this apart pull the servo pin out and then cobble all of this together Cool, now I'm going to get all these goodies cleaned up and then assemble everything. Don't need this anymore. And I'm going to be doing this version. So 
So the only way that I was able to get this top ceiling ring past the snap ring groove is by sneaking a couple of really thin feeler gauges in here to guide it past. And then obviously I'm using my valve spring compressor to get it in there. Make sure these come out in one piece. Now time to install this lever. Got some new O-rings on the end there. Next I've got my tighter ratio lever for the front band. It also came with some heavy duty pieces as well. Here's the stock one and this is the one that's going in there. Next I need to install the little plug that goes in the front and retains the shaft that holds this lever. Next I'm going to install the overdrive piston support here. There's a tiny filter that I'm going to pull out and install a new one and then I got the new gasket here and these get torqued to 12 and a half foot-pounds. Alright now that I got a few less items cluttering up the bench I'm gonna get the case out of the way and then start putting the sub-assemblies together. So starting with the front clutch assembly I'm gonna go ahead and get all this put together. I need to put new lip seals on the piston. Grooved side faces down like that and the same applies for this smaller one which seats under here. So I'm going to dip these in ATF real quick and install them. There's the new seals installed. Now I'm just going to gently finesse the piston into the drum. Next I'm going to install the springs and I'm actually adding three so I'm going from a 9 spring to a 12 spring setup. Now I need to find a way to compress this plate down so that I can install the snap ring. The reaction plate is the same size but uh, this is a 4 clutch setup and this is a 5 clutch setup so hopefully it'll fit. I just noticed that the uh, reaction plate for the overdrive direct happened to be the right size that if I set it over the top of this it looks like it'll push down on it pretty well so I took that and then welded these pieces of pipe to it so I'm gonna compress the retainer and then install the snap ring there it is so I got the front drum done and I just noticed that I didn't put this in. This is the updated seal for the piston and I used the one that just came with the kit. So your man's here has to disassemble everything I just did and redo it so that I can put the updated seal in there. All right, now I'm gonna load up the drum and take a measurement to see how it looks. Now I'm just going to take my input shaft and run it through the splines of all the clutches and make sure that everything's lined up. So I'm uh, getting rid of the wavy snap ring and I installed a flat one that's the same thickness and now I need to measure the clearance using feeler gauges. The clearance actually needs to be 80 to 85 thousandths. So I actually ended up having to machine the pressure plate just had some material cut out of the back side to obtain the proper clearance and then I'm going to make sure that I use the non-machine side facing the clutch because I don't know if this is nitrided or what. Now that that fiasco is figured out it's time to build up the rear clutch. Big improvement here is this which I'm pretty excited about. It's probably the most expensive single component I've ever bought. It's a billet input shaft and it's a one piece so the old input shaft is actually comprised of two parts this part which is the shaft and then this part with the splines and then it's all held together with a snap ring but this design is much much stronger here's the clutch pack also got some different selective snap rings to make sure that I have enough clearance 
and then I've got my uh, Garand heavy bevel spring kit <coughs> which includes which includes uh, the snap rings that are needed and then it gives you instructions on how to install that got the new piston which is this size and that is necessary to utilize this kit so got that piston got new seals for it the drum is all cleaned up I uh, got new seal rings for the input shaft but those don't have to go in right this second let's get to it so there's the new 780 piston with the new seals and the lips face down on both now the next thing that goes on is the Garand bevel spring here and then the Garand kit also comes with, with this uh, steel spacer so the steel spacer goes next now I'm putting the original wavy snap ring back in that I saved from earlier next I'm gonna load up the clutch pack here starting with the bottom pressure plate with that beveled lip facing down next comes a clutch obviously Garand includes a 60 thousandths selective snap ring, so we'll try this. All right, got her all stacked up. Clearance is on the tighter side, it's at about 22 thousandths or so, but uh, that's within what's allowable. I got the new sealing rings on the input shaft there. I have a thrust washer I need to throw on there, and there we go. Alright, so I think I finally have the parts that I need to solve this fiasco. So I have some 55 thousandths, otherwise known as second design steels. So I don't know if I have a 100 thou drum or a 90 thou drum. And uh, depending on which it is, will determine uh, how many of the clutches I'll keep. I'll be using the second design pressure plate which is 85 thousandths if you measure at the ears not the total height so I'm gonna figure out what combination is actually gonna work in here I'm gonna press it all apart again and then reassemble it stack it shim it and then I'll show you how I'm gonna measure it got the overdrive assembled back to this point the combination that I ended up going with is I have a hundred thou drum so I put 10 clutches 10 steels and the 85 thousandths pressure plate on top and then reassembled everything made sure that the intermediate shaft still runs through both sets of splines all that's aligned and looks good so now I'm gonna take some measurements to see what the manual recommends for my uh, selective spacer first thing I'm gonna do is put a straight edge across the face of the overdrive here and then I'm going to use my calipers so all I'm doing is measuring from my straight edge to the face of this and I'm going to do it in four different spots. That so I've got my four measurements. Now I'm going to add them up and divide by four to average them. There's my average measurement. Now what I'm going to do is subtract the thickness of the straight edge that I used and that's what I get 1.335 is the actual clearance between the face of the overdrive case and the face of the hub right here there's a chart that Chrysler made that tells you which selective spacer to use and in order to reference that chart I now need to add 0.5 to this answer because that's the thickness of the Chrysler tool so I'm gonna add that and then see what I get and that gives me the number that I need to reference the Chrysler chart and I'll show you that now after all of that nonsense and referencing that chart this is the spacer that Chrysler would have me use but let me show you why I'm not going to so I need to make sure that my round wire snap ring isn't installed yet I'll just set that out of the way for now so now I install my bearing 
and I've got my uh, .185 spacer here. Now, take the uh, piston here, install that on top. Now it does spin. There is clearance between the face of the piston and this top steel, but the amount that there is, I don't like. And I'm going to show that to you with the first method of measuring this, but I know of two others and I'll show you all three so that you can pick whichever you have the materials for or whichever you like the best. So the first method is measure the thickness of the overdrive piston. So I'm going to get that measurement right now. I'm going to measure the distance from the face of the overdrive piston up here down to the face of that first steel. So that gives me a clearance of 42 thousandths. Now, the reason that I want more than that is because my builder says that uh, he has smoked direct clutches at anything less than 120 thousandths. What I'm doing now, so I put in the thickest single spacer that I have here, which is a .245, and then I've got my piston back on top. Spins, obviously, but let me show you the quickest way that I can reference this is I have a bunch of different drill bits that, to tell me how big the gap is. Just make sure that it isn't getting cockeyed or anything, otherwise it'll mess up the measurement. So that's the, my favorite quick reference for measuring it. And then, let me show you another way to do it. Take some Play-Doh. Now this method probably isn't the best, but it's another reference. And it's going to be treated as plastic gauge essentially. And then I just take my piston, push it down over the top until it's bottomed and then I'll measure the height of the smashed Play-Doh balls. And that would tell me what the clearance is. So just another, uh, another idea for you if you need it. So again, this is the target that I'm going for. Because even with the tallest selective spacer that there is listed in the chart, which is a .245, this is all the clearance that I can get. So that's where this comes in. These little shims right here, which are 10,000 shims, and they come in this little kit here. And the way that these work, pull the piston off, and then they go just like this. They sit on top of the bearing, and then they're kind of held in place by the lip of the bearing, so not a big deal. You, I think you could put up to three of them before you'd start running into problems, but let's see what one gives us. And then, obviously, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, the way that I'm actually measuring it is I'm just stacking up feeler gauges long ways in this little pocket right here. Obviously, got to make sure not to drop anything while I'm doing all this shenanigans. You don't want Play-Doh or feeler gauges in your overdrive, but should be plenty to not smoke the direct when it applies. Now I'm going to show you why I'm comfortable with that, because... The chart only goes to a 0.245, and I'm doing a total stacked height of 0.255. So let me show you a little note in the ATSG that makes me comfortable doing this. Or in addition to my parts supplier saying it's cool. That's the downside, according to the manual. Now, if that thrust plate is too thin, this is what it says. Alright, so now I can finally put my round wire snap ring in the groove. So another thing to consider is the intermediate shaft spacer, which is this guy right here. In case you're interested, I'll show you the chart on how to do that. I think I came up with a way to measure for this little guy. I looked at how the special tool is made that I don't own, and the tool starts where the splines start, so this would be where the top of the tool is, and I know that the tool is 5.5 .5 inches long, so I just took a, you know, my machinist ruler here. I measured from the face of the current selective spacer 5.5 .5 inches to this bearing surface 
and then I took the shaft, stuck it in the uh, bore here until it bottomed out, and then I used my same straight edge from before and measured uh, the distance from the straight edge to my mark, and then subtracted the length of my straight edge and added the 0.5 for the special tool straight edge length, and that gave me a uh, 0.5. 765 and that translated to it was kind of right on the edge between uh, these two selective spacers and I have this selective spacer just kind of a ballpark way to do it but it worked pretty well for me here's a couple more pages that might help you out all right next I'm going to install some new seals on the overdrive piston before I forget and the uh, the pressure is going to come from this direction so the grooves face me now I'm going to install the piston onto the overdrive piston retainer making sure that the little pegs fit into the holes I found something really interesting that explains why the uh, factory calculation didn't work for the overdrive and it's because I don't know what this piston is from, but it's the wrong thickness. This is the one that was in the transmission, and it's a .645. The 47RH is supposed to have this one, which is a .615. I don't know how that got messed up, but I'm going to take the seals off of the incorrect piston, put them on the correct one, which I bought. So I'm going to run the 200 thou selective spacer plus three of the Sonax shims, which gives me a total height of 230 thousandths, but at least I have the right one of these now. That's good. Now I can go ahead and get this uh, .615 piston installed. Tempor temporarily put all the old junk back into the input shaft gear train here and I'm going to go ahead and pull it apart, install new thrust washers, new drive shell, and that's pretty much it. Alright, for my next trick I'm going to take this fiasco apart and replace the junky drive shell with a new one. And to do that, I'm just going to pull this snap ring off and then install this gear, this washer, back on the new driving shell. So I have my quote unquote new driving shell installed on the sun gear here. It's been repaired in the same manner that uh, the old one that I had was, even though it was supposed to be new. You can see the, uh, the heat there from where it was welded. So I actually didn't notice until I was going to assemble the intermediate gear train, but my intermediate shaft has just been butchered. Somebody decided to do what some guys will do to gassers, which is they'll grind down the surface of some of the lube holes, and then they'll drill the holes bigger because they think it lubricates the planets better or something. And I don't know, I could see that argument, but in a diesel, look at, look at how much material they cut out of the shaft. So I got a new one, you can see how much smaller the lube holes are. And then uh, another thing I noticed is I needed a new annulus here because the, the splines on this one are just so worn out. Look at this, pretty much ready to strip out. Also got this, uh, this shim kit here, which uh, should tighten up some of the sloppiness in the intermediate. And then I put another 175 thousandths selective intermediate spacer on just so that everything matches up these shims are pretty handy they so I played around with it a couple times and I ended up just shimming with uh, three of these behind 
the thrust washer back in here and that brings everything forward and should engage the castellations on this driving shell a little bit better. This thing only has like 10 thousandths clearance now so this is way better than it was. Next sub-assembly is the oil pump and you'll notice that this is already assembled. It's got new rings, there's new bushings in it, new seal, it's got a new lip seal as well. Pump bolts here get torqued to 15 foot-pounds so I'm just going to verify that they are. Uh, I need to replace this case seal right here. Got the new one. So I'm going to start loading up the case and I'm going to dip this in ATF and then put it into the cam. Next I'm going to get some ATF on the low reverse drum and then load that in along with the band which has been soaking in ATF. Next up this little guy goes through here. The side with the bronze coating is going to face down so that it rides on this surface of the low reverse drum. Next comes the snap ring. And then I'm just checking the action of it by making sure that it spins clockwise when viewed from the front, but it won't spin counterclockwise. Next up, this little spacer needs to go in. There's that little thrust washer in there. Next I'm going to go ahead and install the front kick down band and it's been soaking in ATF overnight. I've got the uh, band retention stuff in place just loosely for now. Alright now it's time for the pump. I've got a new gasket so I'm going to put it on there and then torque the attachment bolts to 175 inch pounds. All right, now I just have to turn the gear train and make sure there's no binding or anything weird. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so now I'm gonna adjust the bands, starting with the rear, and I'm just gonna torque this guy to 72 inch pounds or six foot pounds, and then back it off three turns exactly, and then tighten down the lock nut to 25 foot pounds. All right, rear is now adjusted. Now I need to adjust the front. I'm using a uh, funky 5 sixteenths, and same thing, gonna torque this one to uh, six foot pounds, 72 inch pounds, and then I'm gonna back this one out two and a quarter turns exactly, and then I'll tighten down this lock nut to 30 foot pounds. So, of course, I had to get on the forums last night, and I was doing some reading, and apparently the front planetary that's made out of aluminum has five pinions, and it's splined to the front of the intermediate shaft. Apparently, that's a common, like a really common failure point. So, I went to buy a steel five pinion front uh, to replace it out of a 47 RE, and supposedly that is just a straight swap, and it fits in. However, the, uh, the supplier had a good deal on a six pinion front. Allegedly, this should work. And then I need to use the thrust washer that came with it, which has uh, six tangs instead of five. And then hopefully it's the same height. It looks like it is, but I don't really know. Pulled it apart again. And now I'm just comparing the stock aluminum planetary here with five pinions to the six pinion. Now the height from my surface to here is the same on both which is what matters. This is about two millimeters taller than this one but that shouldn't matter because the five tang which is for this one and the six tang which is for this one are the same height and the annulus gear sits the same that leaves the only question of using this isolator or this isolator and I think I'm gonna go with this one because this one sits below the mating surface 
with the next thrust washer whereas this one actually sits a little higher and it would be riding on this inside diameter and I think what would happen over time is that would wear out probably create like a sliver that could cause some problems so I'm gonna go with the shorter plastic isolator and then put this whole stack back in there just like it is next I'm gonna install my billet accumulator and the spring all right, now I'm going to install the valve body. Now I'm going to torque them to about 9 foot-pounds, 105 inch-pounds, in a star pattern. Now I'm going to install my Garand filter adapter for use with their deep pan. And to do that, I'm just going to install this Garlock seal followed by the spacer. Reuse two of the old long bolts. Now I'll use the two little screws that came with the kit and install this guy. And again these little guys get torqued to 36 inch pounds or 3 foot pounds. Alright next I need to move the selector so that the uh, bore that holds the parking shaft is exposed and now I can snake this through the back of the case and then install it and now I need to carefully install the e-clip to retain the parking rod and I gotta make sure not to drop it in there or I'm gonna have a terrible day that would have sucked so bad if I dropped that next I'm gonna install these items loosely for now just to keep grit out of there so I have way too much end play with the input shaft and judging by the amount of end play that I do have I can add a uh, hundred thousandths thrust washers to both the input shaft and the pump which leaves the question of why the fuck do I still have so much clearance where the fuck is that coming from I think I figured out why I'm having too much end play on this side of the transmission. I think it's because I was assuming that the depth was set by the low reverse drum where it contacts the driving shell, but I don't think that that's actually the case. I think that this bottoms out inside the overdrive section first, and that sets the depth on the intermediate, which in turn sets the depth on everything. So this time what I'm going to do is bolt the overdrive to the empty main case and then assemble everything with uh, I'm not exactly sure which thrust washers yet I'll kinda guess on that but I'm gonna try it that way and I think that will probably fix the issue here so now I'm just transferring my selective spacer and my shims to this side and then my bearing here as well bearing needs to sit like that got my gasket here and now I can go ahead and lift my overdrive section onto the top feeding the parking rod through the parking pawl stuff and then making sure it sits flush and then I can bolt it together Next I need to tighten the bolts on this flange. The torque spec is 25 foot-pounds and the three lower ones along this edge, they go into the case. So I'm going to put just a little bit of RTV on the threads. And before I do that and kind of seal this up, I'm just verifying that the, uh, the parking rod is working as it's supposed to. And then I'm also going to go ahead and install the intermediate right now just to make sure that everything is kosher there. Intermediate assembly went in there no problem. Now I think I'm comfortable installing the three lower case bolts here with the RTV and then like I said all of those get torqued to 25 foot-pounds.
now the intermediate's going in, hopefully for the last time. Next I'm going to put the 85,000 Mickey Mouse thrust washer in the bottom of the forward. Now I can load this as a unit. This part can be pretty tricky. I find that it's best to get the first couple of clutch discs aligned by getting these castellations seated in the drive shell. And then after you do that, you can kind of get the inner clutch discs aligned to the outer clutch discs. And then just to be absolutely sure that hardened washer sticks to the thrust washer and gets pulled out and then you know it's fully seated. Now that I got it loaded in there, I'm going to take a little bit of ATF and wipe it around the band surface. Next I'm going to finesse the band in there, hopefully for the last time, and then all of the retention stuff for it. But I'm not going to adjust it yet until the pump is installed. Took a little finessing, but I got uh, the band and the strut and the wedge all in there. And then I snugged everything down just so that all of this is held in place. And, and now I'm going to go ahead and put the pump in. And now I have to adjust this band again and then check the end play. So I'm not quite happy with the end play. There's like almost none and it needs at least a little bit. So I'm actually gonna swap out the pump thrust washer to the uh, 60 thousandths one. And I think that'll be pretty, pretty close to perfect. All right, I think I finally got a winning combination on the input shaft play here. And it is the 85 thousandths Mickey Mouse thrust washer, the 85 thousandths input shaft to direct thrust washer, the plastic one, and then the 65 thousandths plastic thrust washer on the back side of the pump. And that is giving me my target end play. So that is finally done. Now I can go ahead and tighten this guy down. I found one source that claimed 25 foot pounds, but I think that's a bit excessive. So I'm just going to snug it down. All right, now I can install my new oil pan, the reusable gasket, and then these Allen head screws to hold everything together. And they all get torqued to 10 foot pounds in a star pattern. The drain plug gets torqued to 15 foot pounds. Next I need to tape off all of the surfaces that I don't want painted. Don't forget about this output shaft seal if you're putting this back into a second gen truck. With any luck, this thing will put power to the ground real nicely. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.